the uh, effect and uh, you know numbers and technology progression has been slowed because we are not able to have an access to the devices. Uh, this is the different procedures done from full stenotomy to the MICS CABGs. This is a scar healed after a two months of a surgery where hardly you can recognize whether the patient has under chronic cardiac surgery. And this is our uh, latest uh, robotic mitral wall repair. However, we can see there are five ports here, four ports and one working port here. Uh, uh, advantage with this is, you know, it is very, very a good uh, surgical view and uh, it gives more working hand. We'll talk about advantages later on and it gives less, less pain and faster recovery. So I'll move on to the other slide. My presentation will be outlined on how to have a uh, feasibility and strategic planning for uh, whether patient is suitable for minimal access on from the echocardiography then how cannulation is going to be helpful with the transesophageal echo and most of the minimal access surgeries are dependent on transesophageal echocardiography for cannulation. Uh, uh, however, you know, addition of a hybrid OR will improve the safety profile for cannulation. Then I will talk on how AOE will help in MICS CABG and robotic cardiac surgery and then I'll conclude the, my talk. So uh, first of all, whenever a patient comes for minimal access cardiac surgery, we need to, uh, from the echocardiography, from transthoracic RT, we need to rule out whether there's a significant aortic regurgitations. Uh, if that is present, then we have to have a strategy planning for cardiac delivery uh, because we cannot have a root cardiac going in these patients. Another uh, uh, another uh, things to look for this uh, is the coronary sinus, which is usually present with the associated with the congenital heart disease like atrial septal defect or PAPVC. And if you have dilated coronary sinus, then we have to have a strategy for cannulation, uh, either left left jugular percutaneous SVC cannulation or a separate cannula, sucker cannula, sucker in the coronary sinus or uh, IVC cannula can be pushed to the coronary sinus for adequate venous drainage and avoid the flooding of surgical field and which will facilitate the surgery faster. Coming to the cannulation for, uh, for the cardiopulmonary bypass, we'll have for we need to either have a peripheral uh, for different surgeries. We can we look for a percutaneous uh, venous cannulation or open or uh, usually our plan is uh, percutaneous venous from the right femoral and left femoral artery is open. However, it depends on surgical preference, which can be open on the right side or both side or, or left side depending on the patient anatomy and uh, patient's uh, atherosclerotic changes. Uh, certain cases of, uh, you know, the right anterior thor thoracotomy, AVR, uh, where we are looking for an arch cannulation sometime, that also can be facilitated by the transesophageal echocardiography, because I will talk to about that, how it will be helpful. About venous cannulation, we can choose right femoral vein, which is the most common because right common iliac is straight line to the IVC and there is usually two stage femoral cannula placed in the SVC through the TOA guidance. And another is a right jugular for SVC, uh, which will be useful in ASDs and robotic uh, cardiac surgeries and in the mitral, uh, uh, mitral wall minimal access, port access surgery to have an adequate drainage so first of all, here in the left corner, left of the image, we have a descending thoracic aorta view, which can be, which has been already been taught in many lectures, how to obtain that from mid esophageal four chamber view. We need to turn the probe anti clockwise, and one can find a descending aorta. We need to remember that just we can see only guide wire. 
because we cannot see the cannula. Cannula is placed in the common iliac arteries and we can see descending aorta, thoracic aorta up to the origin of uh, probably a renal artery maximum, not beyond it. So we can just confirm a guide wire. As soon as guide wire is seen, surgeon can put facilitate with the uh, progress with the placement of a femoral arterial cannula. And once guide wire is withdrawn, remember, we need to look for a flap like in this right lower down image. We need to reduce the color aliasing velocity and check there is a there is no flap and record this image because aortic dissection is a known complication for minimal uh, excess cardiac surgery for a peripheral arterial convolution. So far, we have faced with the two of such cases, so it becomes very important uh, to have in each every case practice this and identify the complication early and manage it. Coming to the um, uh, femoral venous uh, cannulation, which usually is done in our bar center through a percutaneous from the right uh, femoral vein. And uh, for this, I, uh, I prefer to have a transgastric short axis view of IVC as seen here because it, uh, whenever the guide wire crosses the image, I can see it when you're in long axis, sometimes we can miss it if, if guide wire is not in the our ultrasound plane. So here we can see the guide wire is here and then we keep following up to the RA and SVC and then come back here when, when we start putting cannula. So we have to have adequate good coordination looking at surgical field and surgeon's movement as soon as they take cannula, we start looking at here again, so that you know many times the we can just see as a shadow in the IVC. So as soon as we see a shadow, and uh, we we will know that cannula has crossed the hepatic intravenous hepatic intrahepatic IVC, and then we can trace it further because uh, only the next gen cannula is which is fully wired. And the other Edwards cannulas are not fully wired. So when they reach the tip and the distal couple of centimeters is not hyperechoic. So we can just see as a shadow anechoic area. So this becomes very important to follow in this way. Then, as I said, we can follow. Sorry for this image is not very good. So we can follow further up the cannula, which is coming to the RA, and then trace it into the SVC and uh, it is uh, it is mandatory for even aortic surgeries to place cannula up to the SVC to have an adequate drainage and uh, sometimes this getting SVC especially in aortic surgeries is a uh, little difficult so I always go back to the upper esophageal aortic short axis view where SVC is next to the aorta on the right side of the image as seen here, uh, yes, here. Sorry, just I'll get it there. So you can see the cannula in the SVC on the immediate next to the right side of the aorta. So even in robotic cardiac surgery, it we should get the cannula up to this level because the placement of cheat wood clamp uh, will hinder with the venous return if cannula is not positioned up to this level because it can press the SVC and then we'll have inadequate venous drainage and then can have a cerebral edema also because of inadequate SVC drainage. So this is the image where I was talking about you know how the aortic arch cannulation can be facilitated by transesophageal echocardiography. Uh, here you can see the guy, it is basically Seldinger technique is being used by a surgeon where needle is placed to the arch and then guide wire is passed across. We need to follow the guide wire up to the descending of the because some case the guide wire can go to the neck vessels and if cannula is directed to the neck vessels, it can cause injury there and then we can have a inadequate, uh, inadequate flows and we can have inadequate perfusion leading to lysine lactates. Uh, this is uh, about uh, SVC cannul percutaneous SVC cannul tubular cannulation where it is always done under ultrasound guided 
ultrasound guidance as you can see the t ultrasound probe there linear vascular probe being utilized to put a guide wire and then uh, another guide wire the distal guide wire is the svc guide wire cannula guide wire and the proximal one is for triple lumen triple lumen can be chosen to the left side also depending on the preference however i prefer to do on same side and this is how the triple lumen is placed proximally and then next distal one is left for the svc cannulation and remember always use transducer visual echo view when you utilize when inserting an svc cannula because we can follow the guide wire in the ra and then uh, after dilatation we can follow the cannula into the svc and we can position it without any complications because as seen in this image the guide wire can go to the subclavian vein and if it is not reach the heart when we are dilating or trying to put a cannula we can cut and cause and tear and which is a which is a catastrophe uh, if not taken care of immediately it can lead to a it can lead to a death so for hvc cannulation remember use both ultrasound and transesophageal echo right jugular is preferred and use a uh, less than 20 preach french cannula usually uh, trying to put bigger than that cannula especially in the short neck obese patients becomes uh, difficult and trying to insert those uh, bigger cannulas we can have uh, problems and create complications this is uh, um, basically not for the people who are going to use uh, open uh, technique for a uh, open femoral for venous cannulation uh, usually most of our cases we do a percutaneous venous cannulation so we try to look an ultrasound all the time because occasionally the femoral vein can be bang posterior to the femoral artery like seen in this image and in that cases it becomes difficult you know trying to put a femoral percutaneous venous cannula uh, so in those cases then we prefer and go an open cannulation rather than a percutaneous cannulation uh, this is little out of the to stop but i thought in putting this image because occasionally there can be a common iliac vein stenosis or methaner syndromes uh, which is compressing and leading to stenosis uh, narrowing of the common iliac vein on the right side and if that is the case then it can lead to a tear uh, and which can be a lead to retro retroperitoneal hemorrhage and it can be a reason for a huge catastrophe so best is to have an hybrid or for peripheral cannulation so we can see here in this image there is there is stenosis of the there is narrowing of the right arm on right iliac vein okay so if you have a hybrid or this can be avoided completely again coming to the i have just finished the cannulation part and TOE is very helpful for weaning and especially de-airing because we cannot lift the heart and massage it for a de-air. So uh, de-airing is a big problem for minimal access cardiac surgeries. Uh, and uh, sometimes a patient like this, and especially in dilated heart, a lot of air which will take around uh, sometime occasionally up to half an hour to completely de-air and Uh, while that we can have a different uh, different uh, different uh, uh, heart heart issues like you know air getting into the right coronaries and we can have a rv dysfunctions dr uh, lasting for quite a bit time so we need to take care of all those things while separating from bypass after deferring deering make sure there's adequate uh, you know biventricular function especially rv and then we can separate from the bypass and this problem can be avoided by doing a co2 insufflation in the surgical field uh, uh, however that has its own problem uh, it can lead to rv dysfunction uh, i don't know how many percentages but occasionally it can lead to uh, rv dysfunctions
coming to the role of a minimal uh, TOE in MICS CABG here, we can see uh, incision is barely in two inch and only surgeon can see through that incision and barely assistant helping assist, first assistant also can see a little bit. So we don't have an visibility of the heart in MICS CABG. So what we TOE becomes mandatory in such cases, and I use TOE in all MICS CABG patients, which helps me, which helps us to have an continuous real-time visualization of the heart through the third eye, as well as it can help, it will be very useful in case patient is not tolerating of cap, we can always assist in peripheral cannulations without TOE the cannulations becomes cannulation can be a catastrophe so the these are the reasons of hemodynamic instability in any op cap all of us are aware about this and in all of this TOE will be very helpful it will TOE will be helpful in assessing wall ventricular functions, systolic and diastolic, valvular function, chambering compression, or any outflow track or obstructions. We all know it is a class one level indications for unexplained, unstable hemodynamics, and this has to be addressed, uh, addressed quickly in cardiac surgeries to have a good outcome. Uh, here is the mid-esophageal four-chamber view of a uh, a uh, case will be scheduled for MICS APG. So one, we can see the intraital septum is relaxed. It's a very much bowing into the left atrium during the mid-stoly. This is what we are looking at it. We are looking at a supple heart because surgeon is working in a saw in a small confined space. To, we need to have a supple heart to have various positions for various uh, vessels and anastomosis. Uh, if heart is stiff, uh, we cannot lift and turn the heart. So uh, we can always check the same with the E by E dash prime, E by E prime, which is here 9.2. So uh, we need to target uh, uh, this kind of situations, this kind of diastolic functions for minimal access cardiac surgery. MICS CABG, we used to have levosimendan preoperatively for all patients. Nowadays, uh, levosimendan is not available. So it is, uh, we use millenon nowadays to make heart supple, depending on the hemodynamics, millenon dose is titrated. So after uh, conduits are harvested, harvested in MICS CABG and proximal anastomosis is finished, uh, whenever heart is lifted and positioned for either PDA or OM, we assess again all views to look for chamber compression, outflow track obstructions, LVOT, RVOT, two chamber view and four chamber view to rule out whether there is a mini mechanical compression or outflow track obstruction or volume status adequate and to check for there is an Regurgit, mitral regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation. After ruling this out, we can and we're always obviously monitoring the invasive lines, arterial pressure, and we can say, you know, we can proceed with the procedure without any interruption if you have an adequate MAP of 16. So there is another case where this is the OM position and we can see that there are some MR which is not too bad and we continued with the procedure and we could finish anastomosis. Here is the case after positioning of the PDA, you can see there is an RVOPT obstruction and so obviously it's going to cause hemodynamic problems and in the middle of anastomosis, we can have a crash, hemodynamic collapse to avoid that, we need to warn surgeon and uh, this was in, initially notified and the position was corrected and following that we can see there is a there's no RBOT obstruction. RBOT is nicely open. So uh, this is where this is how TOE helps in MICS CABG. Uh, here is uh, another case where 
there is some mitral regurgitation after positioning and um, as we as we uh, started putting sand it has kept on worsening and you can see in this image there is a limited mitral excursion even right ventricular function is going down so this was not expired and immediately heart was dropped in normal position and after couple of minutes once all every parameter settled again heart was lifted in position and look at the bioventricular function and excursion of mitral valve so uh, this this needs uh, notification to the team and which can be corrected in timely manner and we can avoid a hemodynamic collapse here is another case uh, where uh, pda position uh, PDA, heart was lifted for inferior graft uh, inferior wall pda position graft and while putting a shunt uh, we can see you know there is an RV dysfunction, we can see a sac in the RA and RV. And obviously, this patient is not going to tolerate, which was notified. And immediately after put insertion of shunt, heart was dropped back. And after again five minutes, once we saw that heart is recovered, it was lifted, and then we can see how the uh, bioventricular function is there on the heart, and then anastomosis was started and proceeded. To the end result. Here is another case where we can see a significant amount of mitral regurgitation. So this is the where you know our uh, TOE and PA catheter can cooperate each other to have an uh, successful up cap. It is not mandatory to have an up cap, but it can facilitate by combining both. Um, uh, both modalities. So here with this MR, the PA pressure is 32 by 17, and so we continued with anastomosis. However, towards the end of the anastomosis, the MR has started worsening, which has become severe, and PA has gone to 45. It is still less than half of the systemic. We tolerate up to two-thirds of the systemic whenever pa pressure starts going towards a two-third of systemic that is where we want and uh, as we have to drop the heart and again see whether we can further proceed or first with the op cap or we need a bypass assistance so this was just at the end of the anastomosis so it was a couple of bites left it was taken quickly after tying the knot, heart was dropped, and we can see the blood pressure has improved to 108 systolic and PA has dropped to 27 by 12. So, uh, in TOE, will be very, very extremely helpful in my CAPG. Uh, we, we are looking at a short axis view and where heart is empty and fully dynamic. Uh, however, we need to look at other views because this is a 2D images. And when we came to the four chamber view, you can see a torrential MR. Obviously, this patient is not going to tolerate uh, off cap uh, MICS, off cap CABG. So we have to take the assistant of the bypass. Coming to why, why we need to move to robotics, because it provides an exceptional 3D vision. It is a very good surgical comfort. We have a lot of working hands with robotic. In minimal access, only surgeon can see his hands are outside the chest. Assistant can barely see and help one assistant. When you look at robotic, we have four working hands inside the chest. And there is an assistant, bedside assistant addition to which what taking a surgical surgeon's position in minimal access surgery so we have a lot of working hands for robotic cardiac surgery another advantage is another advantage is uh, it is uh, it has been utilized by four ports so 
uh, chest spreading, rib spreading is avoided, which leads to less pain after the surgery. And obviously, it is a logical next step to the minimal access cardiac surgeries. And it, all, it permits participation of the entire team because entire team can see on a big wide screen uh, what is going on and everybody can participate in every step of the cardiac surgery. Here is the case of robotic mitral valve repair. We have stored all images, all four views, four chamber, two ch commissional view, long axis. You can see there is a P2 prolapse and uh, anteriorly directed severe MR. And uh, obviously, you have to rule, rule out for, as I said in previous images, that we need to aortic regurgitations and other, any additional uh, findings which needs to be addressed or which can change the surgical plan. We need to assess the uh, predict, uh, predictability of the SAM needs to be assessed. We are assessing all this in all mitral wall repairs. However, as we go to the minimal access surgeries, this becomes mandatory because going to bypass again or same thing becomes little uh, cumbersome in minimal access cardiac surgery. So we have to have a proper plan and avoid uh, complication to the list. So here in this patient, we had PML height of 18 and, and uh, IBS, basal IBS was 17. So there were two factors which were uh, predicting that this patient can land up in SAM. Uh, it was notified to the surgeon. However, you know, we as uh, India, we can look at the AML height of 32, but when we talk to the most of our surgeons, uh, so we are tend to use towards little smaller size of ring uh, compared to the Western surgeons who come for mitral valve repair, who will prefer to use larger, uh, larger uh, mitral ring for repair. So whenever we have any any factors which is going to predict that this patient might end up in SAM, it needs to be further discussed and notified to the surgical team. So whatever can be done or addressed to avoid the SAM during the procedure should be implemented like sliding plast or a poldoplasty or a bigger size ring. These are all uh, ways to avoid SEM. And obviously, this is first two images are of of, of uh, aortic, uh, sorry, femoral arterial cannulation, which is not very well seen. And the bottom is the femoral venous cannula, which is again positioned well up in the SVC to avoid the compression by chitwood clamp. So cannulation is again helpful by TOE in robotic cardiac surgery, and which is very good. Here's another step which is very important. We need to watch for cardioplegia delivery. So as soon before going on bypass, we uh, get uh, your view and LV uh, long axis view and leave the image there. Once heart is decompressed, sometimes it will be difficult to get this image again. So uh, after, uh, insert the cardiac cannula and clamping the aorta. We need to watch on this view and look at the snowstorm appearance in the aorta to have an adequate cardioplegia delivery. The heart needs to arrest quickly. If there is no snowstorm, heart will take time to arrest, and which is we all we know can lead to a poor myocardial protection. Uh, so here we can see a good nice snow, snow, snowstorm appearance and the image which led to immediate arrest of the heart. Another thing we need to keep a watch is leak or LV distension. Here we can see the LV is collapsed nicely. There is no leak of the cardioplegia in the LV. We can put a color Doppler here. I'll show then that next image is one more. So as we predicted, this patient might have landed up in SAM. 
can land up in SAM and this patient did land up in SAM. So, uh, we can see a gradient, peak gradient of 57 and there will be OT and there is a SAM and there is a this MR related to SAM. So, we need to go on bypass pack and after uh, placement of an alpha stitch, uh, this is how all four images from mid esophageal four chamber to commissural view to two chamber to long axis. We checked everywhere, there was no MR and not uh, not a significant mitral stenosis. So we have checked the gradient and mean gradient was 6.9 on the mitral and there was peak gradient, there was hardly any gradient in LB OT following this. So this is the another image of how to watch for a cardioplegia delivery. So we can put a color top layer there and reduce the aliasing velocity. We can check. We can check that there is no cardioplegia leak in the LV. Now this is another mandatory step for robotic uh, cardiac surgery because we are utilizing a chitwood clamp and uh, our chitwood clamp and a cardioplegia needle to deliver the cardioplegia. Uh, endo aortic balloon is another procedure, uh, another uh, modality which can be used for cardioplegic delivery in robotic cardiac surgeries. However, uh, availability is an uh, issue and we don't have it available in here in India. And that for placement of that TO becomes mandatory. I don't have any images of endo aortic balloon. So here, I will just show a couple of robotic surgical video. This is an LA myxoma, which is being delivered to a uh, subtostomy, which is quite big. And uh, here is the uh, my robotic mitral repair where P2 resection was done. Advantage of robotic surgery is, is especially for mitral repair is, is, is awesome because we have an exceptional 3D view in a console. However, it can be a little deceptive in the beginning because we're not used to that view. Everything is in big. Once you get used to this, uh, view and robotic system it it becomes very good so here is repair done and we can see the following testing that there is no residual leak it will be so you can see the two surgical hand, hands there one retraction LA detractor and then assistants coming in and putting a car knot. So we have, we have a lot of working hands in robotic surgeries and you can see that there's no residual leak. So take a message for uh, role of TOE is uh, basically TO transesophageal echo is an invaluable tool in minimal access cardiac surgeries of all forms. It is very, very useful for cannulation femoral venous, femoral arterial, SVC, aortic arch. It is extremely useful for de-airing. It is obviously useful for assessing pathology and additional new findings in all cases, whether it is an open or a minimal access cardiac surgery. It will helpful in monitoring the real-time cardiac functions. It will be useful for a cardioplegia delivery and it will be very useful for placement of coronary sinus catheter and endoaortic balloon placement, which I don't have any images because I don't have any experience for that. So with that, I, I conclude my talk. Thank you very much for hearing me out patiently. Thank you very much for that I'm going to
And now the topic is open for discussion. Anyone wants to uh, ask question? I will see in the chat this question right up now. Uh, any comments? Uh, questions are welcome. So, did you miss my library statement saying that the series of the third update? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, and uh, I would like to know whether uh, you need patients 